The creators at Grounded believe that brewing great coffee shouldn't be a shot in the dark, and we couldn't agree more. Use the coupon code The Coffee Podcast for 10% off Grounded at groundedcoffeebook.com. Our friends at Map It Forward are hosting two events we think you might be interested in how to map a successful career as a barista, and how to map a successful career in business as a coffee roaster. Use the coupon code The Coffee Podcast for 10% off your ticket. Remember, you can attend virtually. The following conversation is a living continuum that includes every link of the coffee value chain from before the sea to after the cup. I'm Jesse Hartman, and this is The Coffee Podcast. At its core, design has to be impactful. It has to stop someone in their tracks. That's David Salinas of Department of Brewology, and he's back on the show to talk about bag design. David is the thoughtful mind and skillful designer behind the phrase filter coffee, not people. It's a phrase I think can be summed up as impactful, the very thing David's talking about. So what makes an impactful bag design? Let's jump in on the conversation. David, you've done many collaborations and designed for many coffee projects. How important do you think design is for the coffee bag itself? Well, I think in recent years, design has become a more prevalent factor in how the average consumer shops for coffee. I mean, when you take note of how many roasters that have been popping up recently, I mean, honestly, it feels like a new one appears every week. It's it's gotten quite ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, so it's an intensely saturated market. I, I think that's a pretty accurate depiction of, of our current state of roasters and in, in the specialty market. Uh, and many of them are roasting along the same profiles, um, sourcing the same green. Many of them are highly skilled and talented, just like the next one. The average consumer simply isn't attuned to the minutia of nuance that particular roaster is boasting. So, I mean, frankly, at the end of the day, it pains me to say it, but I think a good portion of our shopping decisions are determined by design and packaging yeah, <laughs> how, no, pretty, sure. how pretty the bag looks you know which is really disappointing considering how much work is actually put into uh coffee production uh to know that you know you're you're potentially being determined or uh being judged on your appearance as, as opposed to your you know the contents of your bag right so so in other words design is really important absolutely yeah i think um it's uh it's shifting more in that direction. Like I said, I, there's just so many options for the consumer to choose from. And um, most of them don't know what honey process is or, you know, or what a pacamara is. Um, so, so some of them just reach for the, the bright green bag or the yellow one or whatever. Right. You know? <laughs> or the run, or the one with a crazy image on it that just like pops into your, yeah. your eye. And- yeah. Yeah. So, David, have you had good coffee from a poorly designed bag? Yeah, no, most definitely, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and I can name this. I, I was hesitant to name this roaster, but I can name them because they have redesigned their packaging. <laughs> but I think uh, uh, I would say Kopi. Their their first iteration of the packaging was a little lackluster. You know, I mean, I it wasn't you. necessarily anything I would particularly do, or it would necessarily appeal to me uh from the you know forefront but their coffee was stunning it was a costa rican coffee that they um they had roasted um and it really it overshadowed my dislike for their design choices at that time right uh which says a lot so um when a coffee can kind of like you know remove that obstruction from my view uh, of bad design or poor design or not as good as well, what I would like uh, out of my purview and just focus in on that actual product. Um, I think that uh, that's, that's quite an accomplishment for me per, per, personally. Uh, but yeah, their new packaging is gorgeous. Um, they went with a flat bottom pouch and uh, beautiful artwork that goes on. It's, it's balanced, it's minimalistic and yet, you know, there's content on there. Um, so I can definitely name them. Um, <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah, it's sort of a situation where you're like, obviously they made that decision for a reason. Uh, it'd be interesting to know if it was design motivated or even if it was sales motivated, maybe it was sales motivated because of design. And like you'd mentioned, it sounds like those two things go hand in hand. I, I guess on the flip side, I can ask you the question, have you had a bad coffee with a wonderful bag design? 
absolutely. And um, I can't name this one because <laughs> they're still in existence. And I think it was in the beginning of my my coffee uh, enthusiast journey um, when I was just sort of just ordering stuff online uh, just based on what it looked like. Uh, but yeah, I will say they're from Southern California and their design looks great. I love it. I love it. And I hate their coffee. <laughs> well, there, there you go. So it, I, I think, you know, the reason I ask these questions is, is kind of to touch on the fact that you could have a delicious coffee that you work so hard to, to sort of, you know, you source it, you roast it, you bag it. Like there's a lot of hard work that goes into that, but if you're not dressing it up appropriately, um, then then it might not sell, sell simply because it's it's not appealing uh, to a consumer, and so there definitely is a balance that that um, roasters need to strike. Because I, I understand a lot of like the old schoolers not wanting to to placate to to these trends, and and they're they're good at what they do. They have amazing relationships with with their producers, and that's that's their story and it's an awesome story and their coffee is just unequivocally beautiful coffee um and not wanting or not seeing the need to fix something that isn't broken in their perspective is a bit of a blind side in my opinion but having the maturity to kind of reassess and self-evaluate who you are as a brand and who you could be uh without trading who you are, uh, but, you know, growing into who you need to be, um, I think is probably a better description of that. Um, I, I think it's important that a brand would have that maturity to kind of self-evaluate, uh, and, and grow, not necessarily rest on their laurels and kind of like coast. Uh, cause I mean, if you take that, that, that route, I, I I'm sorry to say you you're, you're going to be left behind. So, as far as bag design goes, what do you believe to be the main elements of great bag design? I would have to refer you to something I call the three C's of design. Ooh, okay. wow. This sounds, this sounds interesting. <laughs> three C's of design in, in regards to coffee packaging. And I, I believe it's clarity, creativity, and consistency. With clarity, I think at its core, design has to be impactful. It has to stop someone in their tracks. It has you can't glaze over it. It it it, it, it should be able to pull someone in, and there should have some sort of contrast of elements that effectively visually uh, creates that that dynamic of reaction. Um, there there needs to be that point in which when you're shopping for coffee in the supermarket or wherever you are, that one design grabs you somehow. I, it, it, it'll look different ways to different roasters based on who they are, what their story is, who their market is. But uh, at its core, I think you need to be clear about who you are as, as a brand. And that needs to be communicated instantaneously, in my opinion, yeah. uh, to the consumer. You can't be confusing about it, about your messaging, about your imagery. It has to be a simple message. Uh, and creativity, um, surprise the consumer. Uh, have have an element in there that that blindsides them. Uh, say, for example, like Kopi on their their new uh, packaging. It seems like this is sponsored by Kopi. Um, and in fact, they're actually our next roaster for well, a series. Well, you know, yeah, so there's a plug. And that's perfect. That's just a coincidence. <laughs> but on their packaging, they actually they have this little yellow smiley face sticker on the back of their bags, and it's just sort of like. It's just a small touch. It just takes so little effort to put that on there, and it 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 it's so simplistic, it's so iconic, and everyone recognizes that, regardless of where you are in the world, as a sign of goodwill, you know. And it's just a little creative touch. Another example, I would think, um, Coffee Supreme out of New Zealand, they have one of those um, zip tie, those resealable bag tabs that you pull, yeah, uh, um, on the top of their bags. And in very small print on the tab, it's probably the size of your fingernail. It's it just says "Open Sesame," so I mean, <laughs> it's just a little cute little nuance, little added detail um, that consumers really enjoy. You know, they interact with that, and they 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 love to to see these things. And and it doesn't take much effort. It just takes a bit of creativity to kind of like, hey, we're going to throw this little 
thing in there. Metric is another one on the bottom of their bags. It says made by humans, which I think is really endearing and kind of, of course it's made by humans, but it's, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not made by dogs. Right? It's <laughs> right. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, like throw your personality in there, but don't be obnoxious about it at the same time, you know? Right. And lastly, consistency. I mean, I think this is the biggest one for me. I don't know how many times I've seen roasters just try and be everything at once sending all these mixed messages about their brand um, on the same platform as like their coffee bags. It's just such a confusing thing. And it's unsettling, I think, as a, uh, from a consumer's perspective to kind of like constantly see someone's packaging changing. So if you're going to have certain elements in your design, be consistent about how you speak about your coffee. Be consistent in your messaging, your imagery, um, it seems like it's such a simple principle, but I can't tell you how many times I've seen roasters kind of veer away from a great design and just like, we're going to have fun this month and do this. And right. it, sure, it might be fun within your, your limited office, you know, like this is a fun idea. But I think from a consumer perspective, we'd like to know what to expect. And if you set a certain tone with your brand, you really should be consistent. So. Again, yes. So clarity, creativity, and consistency. I think those are pretty some rather basic principles. So it sounds like you, you mentioned consistency is is what is most important to you. Do you think um, that is the most important out of the three you've mentioned for for bag design from a brand perspective? Um, not necessarily. I mean, I, I I honestly don't think either one of these three are the most important. I think they're they they work in concert with one another, um, and there's times in which creativity is most important. There's times in which clarity is incredibly paramount, you know, to a brand. Right. And there's times in which consistency just needs to stay there, you know, um, <laughs> do what it <laughs> says it's supposed to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, and, and this is a kind of off the, the main trail here a little bit, but do you think consistency needs to tie into, you know, we're talking about coffee bags, but say this is a cafe roaster sort of, organization do you is it your impression or your opinion that the consistency should also be found say in the cafe setting like the message that you're telling or is it okay to kind of oh the bags are like this but the cafe is like this no i I think honestly i I think that's a missed opportunity if if you're not tying in your cafe layout to your bag design if there isn't a connection there it's such a missed opportunity to have continuity and and uh, co- a cohesive message or aesthetic. Um, if you have that opportunity, you should take it. Uh, and I've seen brands do that with their packaging and their their, if not their bar layout, the colors that they use within their bar, um, within their artwork on the walls. Um, not not to go again to metric again, but like they do that. They uh, if you look at their packaging, their colors on their brand, their, their 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 coffee bags, and you look at their 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 store in in Chicago, they just did a, an immaculate job to marry the two to where like this visual, it's a visual experience for the consumer to engage with and interact with, um, and I think that's a fantastic uh, execution of that principle. Let's let's move into elements. So we've talked about what bag design needs. Let's move into what what doesn't work. So, David, what what are elements you've seen in coffee bag designs that you think just don't work? I'm not sure if it's the most important, but lately I think our industry could use a bit of constructive criticism on this topic. I think brands simply just need to be original. Um, so what doesn't work is uh, running with someone else's idea, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Because uh, it's it's disingenuous, and the consumer can see right through that. When you know we notice a lot of similarities between like you know cafe layouts and like wait a minute that's the same wallpaper from this other shop over here, and they have the exact same machine, and and it seems like you know we all have the same Pinterest boards, you know, uh, and we're all <laughs> drawing from the same influences, and eventually we're all looking the same. Uh, and that definitely does uh, translate into uh, bag design. It, it's definitely uh, refreshing to see a brand kind of like cut from the herd and and do something new and original. And eventually that person or that brand will be, you know, robbed, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah, it's kind of, it seems it's, to be 
a little bit yeah. of the nature of the, the yeah. industry. Yeah, it's just like a, a, a consist. That is a consistent principle, and you can probably, if you want, you can edit this act, this part out. But I did see that there's a new podcast that kind of borrowed your logo. What? Just, uh, yep. Yeah. Frick no! <laughs> I mean, Are you serious? I'm very serious. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know if you want to edit that out, but <laughs> I, I, I mean, know, just a perfect that, case in point right there. <laughs> perfect case in point is like we were we. We're, we're, we're all trying to do the same thing. And a lot of us kind of lack, you know, that, uh, the mental fortitude to kind of really, you know, marinate on an idea and, and try and create something that hasn't been done before. Uh, and we just kind of look at our neighbors and say like, wow, they're doing great. And I love everything they do. And we essentially carve and copy them, you know, and hope no one notices, but people notice, man. I mean, like, it's just, uh, it's just really disheartening to see, uh, that happen time and time and time again. So to answer the question, things that don't work is like taking people's ideas and and uh, using them and trying to pretend like they're your own because that's simply disingenuous. That's like, And you don't want to be known as a brand that, that does that because, I right, mean, right. especially within uh, people that consume coffee, a lot of them are creatives. And this, this topic is a very heated to- topic for them because, I mean, a lot of them have been victims of intellectual property theft. So uh, I would definitely say be original. Whatever you do, do something different. So let me um, let me see here. So let's uh, let's move into sort of a more uh, creative realm in this conversation. Um, <laughs> see how this goes. Uh, let's let's make a fake roaster brand and call it something. And I'm going to have you sort of walk us through how you would think through designing the bag. Okay. Super creative. This might not work. I don't know. Uh-huh. <laughs> so uh, let's think of a name. Um, hmm. uh, if we could even like combine uh department with the podcast. Uh, de- I, I don't know. Do, are you good with names? Uh, yeah, names. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I, I could do uh, a band SCN, name generator. It's coffee roasters. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> How about that? It's it's kind that my name goes for sure. Jesse and David's coffee roasters. Okay, it's not the most interesting name, but um. So so how would we go about designing? Obviously, we'd have to do a logo. Um, mm-hmm. how could how should we think about doing this thing? Like, wh- what do you think the process should be? Obviously. The brand needs some some marker like a logo or something, and then the the bag needs to be designed in like a unique way. So say, I don't know, say our our like logo is like uh, some some like microphone with a uh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel so uncreative right now, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. Say say we have a logo and it's uh, a dog breathing fire. Okay. Gotcha. That's that's our logo. Don't know why that's our logo, but that's our logo. How would okay. we go about designing a bag around that brand with the things you've talked about? Things like clarity, creativity, and consistency. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, uh, given the logo, it's a good direction to start with. Like um, typically, uh, brands that approach me about uh, redesigning their packaging. Um, they typically start with a with with the element of the logo. Like this is who we are. This is who we've been for 15 years, and we do, we want to stay true to this, but we want to pivot um, as far as our packaging. Uh, and at that point, we start unearthing their story. We start unearthing who they are and who their market is, um, and where they're trying to be. You know, um, where they who are they they're trying to grow into. Um, um, and yeah, a lot of times that's just, uh, conveyed in really simplistic elements of just simply, you know, a good color palette, a good typeface, uh, family to work around and kind of build an infrastructure around, uh, these pillars. And this creates the house, so to speak, in which we, we tell this story and we invite people in, um, and, and to have these pillars in place are really, uh, they're great fail safes to kind of like, you know, um, default to when in doubt, you know, 
be consistent with your with your typefaces, be consistent with your color palette, be consistent with your your icons in order to tell this ongoing story. Um, and I think that's a pretty good infrastructure to operate within uh, in regards to to communicating a brand's story, communicating the brand's uh, manifesto and and um, uh, the reason why we exist as a as a coffee roaster. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's a, it's a pretty good place to start. Um, okay. well, good. You know what I think I might do, uh, for the listeners is draw a picture of this brand that we just created on you know, the Jesse awesome. and David coffee roasters with the fire breathing dog. Um, just so they can get an idea of, uh, <laughs> I'll get your it's approval gonna, before I, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to do it. Yeah, it's done. Um, it's finally happen. So we've talked a lot about design. You know, design is super important. Obviously, we're talking about that mostly. But function too, right? So I I don't think these two things should be divorced, but I want your opinion. Uh, you are the design expert here. So in your field, how do you think these two aspects of bag design should relate to one another, that being design and function? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question because like, I think in my own personal life as a consumer, uh, function and design can be rather disconnected. Uh, and I'm just looking around in my office right now. Um, like say for example, I have a turntable designed by Dieter Rams. Um, it was produced, uh, back in the fifties. Um, it's, uh, it was manufactured by Braun. It's called the SK six one. It's also known as uh, snow white's casket. It's, um, it's an immaculate, um, simplistic iconic design um and back when this they were produced they were set to 33 rpms and not 33 and a third rpms which is currently the speed that most record players function at (laughs) so uh, for all intents and purposes it's it's actually in mint condition and fully functional if you have the right records but for all (laughs) intents and purposes it's completely unfunctional and it's just like eye candy and i it's one of the center pieces in my office because i just i I adore Dieter rams and he's an amazing designer industrial designer um but it's not necessarily the most functional and i mean again like on my wrist of of a watch uh designed by uh form and function which is actually an ironic name uh because the reason i arrived at this watch it's not the most efficient in telling time because it's 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 face is is really traditional and classic so they're small numbers it's not right. um it's not a digital watch is what i'm saying so um what i'm getting at in this point is like as consumers we 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 look for items that bring functionality and efficiency to our lives but sometimes we make decisions that are completely inefficient and they're really kind of more evocative they're really based on like, how does this record player make me feel when I look at it? I see. Yeah. Um, and I didn't when, and, and maybe it's, it's occurring to me right now at this moment that I didn't buy this. I didn't buy this record player to play music. I, I which sounds ridiculous now that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it because it just, it, it makes me feel amazing when I look at it. It's just, when I study its design, its simplicity, its minimalism, and to know the story of how Dieter Rams created a brand and aesthetic for Braun that actually went on to inspire the brand Apple, uh, it's a legacy. It's a statement of legacy of design that that sits in my office proudly, and I love it. Um, and again, it is not the most functional thing in the world. So getting back to coffee, I'm, I'm sorry I went down that rabbit hole. No, um, it's good. I think function can be overrated. I think design can be impractical design can be inefficient and it it doesn't have to be the most efficient thing um available but it i think uh banks on this opportunity to kind of connect with people and why they consume the way they consume form and function it's just something i hear architects talk about uh in the in the building out phase and design phase and um and so i know in coffee you know there's not much you can do with uh, form or function in a coffee bag because most everybody is purchasing from pretty similar manufacturers of bags, right? Um, and and so I wonder if there's a way from a design perspective that you could 
um, sort of branch. I've seen some companies do this where you branch out and you do something new. Mm -hmm. And maybe that goes back to what you're saying earlier, David, about being creative in your form. Yeah. Yeah. Like say, for example, like I've had the opportunity to work with quite a, uh, a few different uh, roasters and, you know, designing their packaging. It's been, it's always been really fun. Um, and there's like, there's this one particular manufacturer, I believe they're called Saber Brands. Um, and they create, they, they produce coffee bags. And I've worked with them a few times uh, for uh, working with some clients, uh, creating design uh, packaging, a manufacturer called Saber Brands. And um, I love when I first got to see what they do their their fun their capabilities it was it was just a, ridiculous it was amazing because like they were offering you can print on the front and the back and the side and the bottom and the inside um and it's just like oh my gosh let's flood this with design you know um and i've done that a few times um but i think like having unlimited capabilities isn't necessarily a healthy thing in design um and and to borrow from Dieter Rams once again, who said the best design is the least design as possible, which I thought was just beautiful. Um, and if we can move forward and function in, in that manner uh, in regards to design, I think I think uh, I think we would have a lot a lot of attractive things available in the market. Uh, so, like say for example, I think like one of um, a great example would be like Verve. Um, Verve coffee ro- roasters out of uh, Santa Cruz. If you look at their old design, um, it's great. I mean, like it's this black bag, and I remember first seeing it. It was like, whoa, this thing is ornate, and they had like text and design everywhere on every panel. Um, and when you unroll the bag, it just uncovers another aspect of the design. It's just it had like all these different foil finishes and stuff, and they really went all out. They maximized on the capabilities of that bag manufacturer. And then recently, maybe a couple of years ago, um, they worked with a design firm called uh, Colony, and they completely rebranded or, or redesigned their packaging. And when you set those two examples side by side, and actually I do have the original packaging um, here just as reference and their new one, they are two sides of two different coins, honestly. I mean, yeah. like one is ornate, densely designed, and the other is just so airy and clear and consistent. Um, and it's just there, it's just it makes you feel good. I don't know what it is about it when I look <laughs> at their old packaging, I feel overwhelmed. You know, they yes. did a great job. You know, they had a great designer and they designed the hell out of that bag. But it was a bit much, you know, it's a bit much for the eyes, uh, even though clearly they hired a great person to, to, to design that. Um, on their second iteration, it seems like they took notes on that and they created like this consumer experience where like it's just such an airy, um, light feel. Um, of design. And when I look at it, it, it's just calming. It it just, it it feels better. It feels, um, you know what to expect. I think when you, when, when, when you shop for their coffee and for some reason on some level that brings comfort to the consumer. Um, and that's a, that's a good, that's a positive thing. We tackled some things, um, in, in our conversation so far, things about being genuine with your design, right. And, and original, was kind of the the uh, nuance there, and then also having limits on your design. Um, yeah, absolutely. Is is something to be important um, because that's true. You don't want to overwhelm the person, uh, potential buyer, looking at your bag. Um, granted, I, I I expect a consumer walking into your cafe looking to buy coffee is more than likely going to buy coffee. I think that the odds are probably pretty high in that regard, but let's say you're on the shelf somewhere else or you're online, like you've got to find a way to entice, especially online, right? Where you can buy coffee from anybody, um, seems these days, like mm-hmm. your design is going to have a, I, I assume a very important factor in, um, uh, in that purchase. So, uh, let's, let's go ahead and, and tackle what I, I believe is sort of a, 
really important element for roasters to be successful, which is marketing. There's all these smaller roasters and new companies um, who don't have a marketing team or not aligned with a marketing firm. Once you have a good design down, you could just throw it on a retail shelf. But uh, David, what do you think are key elements to success in flaunting your roasting brand? That's really where the rubber hits the road. Um, Because you can have a great design, but if it's just kind of, you know, behind glass, it's kind of pointless. The question would essentially be is like, how does your brand actually connect with people? Is there a story? Can people interact with it? What are the main objective objectives of, of, a, of a brand isn't simply to be seen, but how are people adopting your brand into their lives? There has to be a point of interaction. Um, and again, this comes back to that whole idea of having the same Pinterest board um, as you know, uh, as an industry. Right. And if we all have the same Pinterest board, we're all drawing from the same influences and we're all inspired by the same people and we're all using the same terminology. It's really easy. It's actually a very simple process to observe these patterns and not only observe them, but try and find the gaps, try and find Yes, the, the, the industry, the, the market as far as coffee roasters is saturated. And I mean, you have this enormous task of standing out amongst amazingly talented people with great design and everything, you know, behind them. Mm-hmm. But there's a way to tackle that Goliath. There's a way to, to fell that giant. Um, and it's, it, <clears throat> there's a blind spot is what I'm saying. And it's going to look different uh, in different scenarios. Um, and if everyone's drawing from the same influences, do the opposite, you know, (laughs) like say for example, with, um, with our roaster series that we're doing right now, it's a six part series featuring six different roasters over these six months for six months of this year, where we're talking about, you know, how a lot of, all of our roasters using, use the exact same bag manufacturers. So that if that's a known fact, known pattern that I'm observing, it told me okay, I need to find something else. I need to find something different. And that's precisely what we did. We actually created like a custom box with a tie string uh, that's attached to it and it's printed on both sides and the inside as well. And there's nothing like it that exists in the coffee market. And in fact, we're constantly barraged by people asking, where'd you get those boxes made? And And you're like, like, uh, proprietary. (laughs) (laughs) Like a year to nail down. Uh, again, you know, touching that on that point is like you you really need to cut from the herd and and do something different. And and to give a couple examples of brands that are doing this, doing an amazing job in, at this is uh, like Populous um, uh, Coffee Roasters. They are do, they every year they do the uh, Flight of Fancy competition, which is a really creative, you know, fun interactive event where like they sell coffee. That's really what they do, you know. But they right. they pivot their format in which you can interact with their brand and it becomes like a contest where you can, you can win a uh, Lamar's Zoko mini or something, you know, um, uh, I, they're Andrew's just done an amazing job as far as like thinking outside the box and doing something different from everyone else. Cause like, frankly, I mean, we're all, it seems like we're all mimicking each other. Um, and it becomes this echo chamber of just dullness, honestly. So it's really refreshing to see, Brands kind of cut from the herd and do something different. Uh, I think um, also um, Coffee Supreme, they did, um, gosh, I think they released, and this is actually, kind of, it's, it's, it's become a recurring theme. It seems like more roasters are doing this to where like they released um, the same, I think it was a Pacamara, but roast, uh, processed two different ways sold in the same box they did like special packaging for it and that's like another creative facet into where like you're educating the cut the consumer and you're 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 elevating that customer experience and the that in the perceived value of the coffee as well um and and yeah there probably isn't something new but like it's it was done very well it was ex their their level of execution was just like amazing um and so I think it's it's paramount that we're able to uh, perceive these patterns that exist within the industry and find out where these gaps exist, right. where where your story uh, brings something new and says something new about coffee, about people, 
Um, and there's just so many opportunities. And I mean, frankly, that's what we do as a brand, as the Department of Virology, is that we're constantly looking for those vacuums that exist and, uh, and opportunities that exist to collaborate with other brands. And that's, you know, frankly, I, again, another vacuum that exists is like, you know, this whole industry is predicated upon the idea of competition. And, you know, why not collaborate? You know, why not work with different roasters, you know, your competitors, perceived competitors, um, and create something fun and cool. Um, and I think the consumer gravitates towards these ideas because they want to experience new things. Because at the end of the day, this is all about the consumer. This is about their story, about their coffee journey. And unfortunately, it's not about you. It's not about your amazing, you know, setup um, or your story. It's about the consumer's story. And they, they want to feel like they've made the right choice and and that's really kind of where that's how we shop we want to we want to have that assurance that we made the right decision um and i think it's just simply a matter of being genuine in your approach being genuine in your messaging uh being consistent being creative <laughs> being clear um and uh, do something new do something different be original and impactful with your bag design as a coffee roaster It may go without saying, but do be inspired by the bag designs around you. Be inspired by the art in the coffee industry. Be inspired by the art outside the coffee industry. I know that I feel inspired after these conversations, and I'm ready to go do something new. I don't know what it is yet, but I want to know what y'all are doing. So hit us up at our website at thecoffeepodcast.org. The Coffee Podcast is produced by me, Jesse Hartman. And music is by Michael Parallax. You can check his music out at michaelparallax.com. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, and until next time, happy brewing.